Thank you. The tenth frame. Back of food to break. Gerard Green had a setback in the summer. His snooker club in Maidstone closed down. The club was called Serious Snooker. But uh, you don't get much more serious snooker than he's playing now. Yes, and it is getting a bit serious for Gerard. It, sadly for him, this is probably the worst he's played in the whole tournament. I never saw every one of his, uh, see every one of his qualifying matches in the group phase, but it's just up being unravelled a bit here. Just there's so much more at stake, and uh, it's unfamiliar territory. So deep into the tournament. He had a fantastic chance at 2 0 in front to clinch the, the third frame. It really was only a case of knocking in a yellow or a blue and getting back on the yellow. And he just seemed to be in two minds. And from then on, he hasn't been able to get back in control of this match. Whilst Marco hasn't been glittering either himself. He's just stuck to his job more. Four. Yes, I must agree with you, Steve. I think from 3-0, Green would have taken some catching. But uh, Fu levelled at 2-all. He's levelled twice more. When Five. Green went the odd frame in front at 3-2 and 4-3. Now Fu, a frame ahead, is within a frame of victory. Fu has an angle on this red that should he so wish he could smash into the side of the pack and really have a chance to win this match in one visit will he take it though will he play this shot I think Ronnie O'Sullivan would he's got to force it over a fraction it would have to be a very hard strike but it certainly could pay dividends I think he's got to go for this. The black's in play. If he put some sort of screw back on, he could probably go up for the blue as well. Maybe a fraction high. It just looks like the right shot for me, Clive. But it didn't to him. Twelve. not saying that if I was playing in the match that I'd have played that. It's funny how you, from the commentary box you see different shots, but uh, as Willie Thorne would testify to. He's still got a red below the main pack. Not the red he's going to play now, but that red there we can see that he could use to split the pack up, so perhaps he didn't have to go into them, but And we'll see how it unfolds. Nineteen. The black and pink mustn't be touching. Twenty. Mm, perhaps this is going to unfold okay for him. He's going to leave himself low on this red.
Oops. Mark of four, 20. Putting some side spin on there. If you flick the, flick the black ball off course somehow, something went wrong. Reprieve for Gerard Green. Yes, badly missed pot, but uh, he's also missed his position for the back red. So no immediate chance for Green to respond to his 20-point arrears. Needs a good safety. And make sure he didn't doesn't stick any reds over the pocket. And in making sure that he didn't stick any reds over the pocket, he had to sacrifice good safety. A bit easier now for Marco. He can play behind green or brown, perhaps. Right of centre striking to swing it round. red from the right hand side of the table I was very conscious of the possibility of counting another ball there which uh, could have been a serious matter He'd miss the red also. All in all though, he's happy with the, the end result. Oh, I don't think Gerard Green's very happy with this. I think he's in a bit of trouble here. Safety-wise, he doesn't like it much. He may only be playing to dump onto the top cushion. just see enough but he just didn't like it and that's the reason why he knew there was lots of things that could go wrong with that safety shot Foo's very close to winning this match he just needs a good positional shot possibly oh. well Gerard Green for that's what he didn't need if the cue ball simply stayed on the table, he would have been all right. It's tough getting over the line sometimes. Right, build himself up here for a big red. He's got to get back in this game somehow. So attack. difficult it is sometimes when winning or losing is the immediate issue the game seems to change from uh, the early frames when the winning line is a long way away Another nasty shot for Gerard Green to work out. Safety wise, there's a few dangerous parts to it. It's a very tough, thin escape off this left hand red. He has got another red he could play on the 
right hand side of the three that are together and then play with some left hand side spin it around across the blue spot somewhere somewhere near the blue spot I think you'll have to settle for that that's about the best he could really do and actually the way it's come out problem for Marco he's got a pot but it's of no value Yes, the one to left corner is difficult and risky for no apparent gain. I think Marco's going to like this. Green may be forced. I'm not too sure he can even get down into this corner. I was going to say forced to play off a side cushion down in behind the red, but I think I don't think the line's there exactly. So what can he do? Red hanging over the pocket. He'd like to shift it somehow, and if he can't, well, does he take on the red to the left corner? He may be forced to do that. That's a horrible shot to have to play. Surely there's, a, there's some sort of safety shot he can attempt. He's going for it. Left corner. Well, went for it full-blooded. Half an hour since Green has potted the ball, and that was terribly difficult and risky, and wouldn't have been attempted if he could have seen an alternative. Fu comes to the table, 16 points in front. And possible reds everywhere. opportunity now for Marco Fu. He's just run through a bit too much though and whilst the blue and the green are available, I think at least they're available, the red's in the the red's in the equation behind him. Behind the white anyway. Oh, look at that. How on earth did that get there? Queuing is hampered for blue or green. Could be the only place that that could be the case. He just can't get his bridge hand quite down. So, what looked like a great I chance yielded Fu only a single red. Well, it was Marco that put the ball there. Although it didn't look to be a problem as he rolled that red into the middle pocket. But that was a much more difficult blue to take on than it would have been with more lateral queuing. Oh, and Gerard's he's lost the plot a bit. Oh, that's really sad. I tell you what, it's been a, a great tournament for him so far. He's just lost it a bit. So often it's not your best standard that's important, it's the standard you never fall below. And uh, Green should never have missed that red under any circumstances.
you don't mind going out of a tournament if the other guy plays well. And that happened this afternoon in a fantastic oh. match. But what you don't like to do is to underachieve, especially when you've been playing so well throughout most of the tournament. Five. Yeah, when that happens, you're bound to torture yourself for about 24 hours, replaying in your mind the shots you've missed. Well, he hasn't lost it yet. Marco's got to mind his work. He's already had one great opportunity. This is his second. You'd expect him to take it. Well, played for a fuller cannon on the red. 14. To keep himself closer for his next pot. But in ordinary circumstances it should still be no problem. He's only got to pot the red, he's on straight pink to middle. That may have been the shot that won it for him. It wasn't the hardest rest shot in the world, but enough control to bring it back for the pink. It's a statement of authority. And I would suggest that Marco Fu is very close to the winning line here. Thirty-eight points in front. Twenty-one more now, let's have another look, yeah, now 38 points in front, he's going to be possibly over the line before he needs a difficult red. Two in front, 51 on the table. That's what Marco's looking at. as easy as it should have been. It should have been on pink straight to middle. Looks like he's got pink straight to corner <clears throat> and, and only being a, a foot behind it. It's not much more difficult than the pink in the middle. Just Marco that four, much more difficult. He screwed back to the top cushion and left a dodgy red along the top for Gerard, but another lifeline. It just shows how difficult it is to nail down victory in a match like this. Just let the cue ball get away a little. Straight pink to middle. I very much doubt whether he would have missed it. Well, I thought he'd get that pink in the corner. Gerard was very sensible in not attempting that red along the top cushion. I think that could have ended in tears. He's giving himself some hope here. Get the reds into open play. Possibly he can clear up. Marco pushing the black safe, but has he left the red on? 
46 points behind, 51 remaining, as you can see on our screens. Three blues, 21 points, sorry, 18 points, and the colours, 45, not enough. But that was a natural cannon from his first red. The pink is on. of that blue that he knocked in. Now what's he planning? Get the black out. Oh dear me. Oh well I think he Gerard Green. A bit lucky the black didn't go in but he deserved that luck. He's played a very aggressive safety shot. Now he's put the pink and black into open play and now Marco's got to be very careful. Perhaps a bit of insurance for Marco with the green going safer. Is there another twist to this frame and match? Foo needing this frame to go through to the final. Green needing it to level at five all. Of course there's some easy safety shots from now for both players to play as containing shots, just uh, pushing a red up towards that black. But here's Marco playing the pot. Well that was a bit risky. In fact very risky wasn't it? He gained ball I know but Yeah, he, he couldn't possibly know, of course, where the red was going to go if he happened to miss it, and a bit unlucky to have finished there, in such a position that Green can not only pop one red, but develop the other. Marco's going to rue playing that more aggressive shot instead of a containing safety. Mustn't miss this. <laughs> Don't worry, I've missed those. <laughs> OK, he missed a red a lot easier than this earlier on. It's a bit it's different now. He's got a chance. All of a sudden, the mental out out outlook may be better. within 15. One part of leaving Green needing a snooker. Green was torturing 17. himself in his chair. The mistakes that he's made. Well, one minute he looked down and out, Gerard. He looked all over the place mentally as well. But all of a sudden, he's got his focus back. Frenchy. He looks a different player. He's been given a dog's chance and he's taking it. Gerard's feeling the pressure. 29. He's getting the balls in the pockets, but he's losing control of the cue ball. He's come the wrong side of the pink. That's about the best he could have done, dropping the blue in slowly. And now the cue ball's got to do some mileage to get on this black. I don't think he can play with side spin. I think he's forced to go in and out of bulk here. Just caught the middle pocket jaw, thus ruining his position. Well, 
Well, he, he nearly knocked somebody out the front row with his cue there, going through the ball, but he's reeling a bit, but he's got a chance for a safety shot now. I don't think he'd be playing the pot. Gerard Green, 35. It's a decent safety. He'd be very upset that he didn't clear up from ideal position there. The bad brown that cost the prop caused the problems. Well, will Gerard speculate on the black into the yellow pocket and screw back to the top cushion? The worst scenario would be if it wobbled and went across into the other jaws. I think he can probably hit it softly enough. Oh, it's a horrible shot, but if it went in, it'd be a genius shot. Asking a lot, surely, at this stage. Yes, but it's not, other shots are not so clever any, anyway, so... Mm. Not bad. You'll settle for that. This is not nice. Safety shot could go wrong here. Too sure he's made his mind up. What is the best safety shot? It looks like um, it's got to be something thin. I think he, if he attempted the pot into the green pocket, he'd wobble in the jaws or possibly going off into the yellow pocket. Very thin on the left, very thin on the right. He tried the pot. I think he tried the pot. He would have been okay. It wasn't in enough. And here's a chance with Gerard Green, albeit a tough one. This for five all. Green was thinking that he'd lost the match when Nyako Fu needed only one further ball for victory. But uh, it turned right round, so it's 5 all. Three hours, 41 minutes play, has left the match level at five all. Fu certainly got to get his mind together after failing to clinch such a golden chance to clinch victory in the last frame. So on that account alone, I would make Green a slight favourite because he would have faced the worst. He would have assumed he was going to lose. Yes, he's been given the lifeline, but whoever should get through to the final out of these two players, I think we'll need to up their game to have any chance against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the form he's been showing. 
obviously they would have nothing to lose should they get to the, the final. Marco would probably consider he had more experience of playing in finals, having already played in one so far in his career. And uh, having also beaten O'Sullivan one year in the World Championship at the Crucible. But uh, that safety went wrong. When it's lined up, black doesn't go, nor does pink. So it's a massive screw back to get the right side of the blue. Well, can he run through? Don't tell me the black goes. With me saying the black doesn't go, it just doesn't look on its on the screen as if it does go. Hmm. Okay. Well, then in that case, Gerard just decided to not exactly cut his losses, but knock the red in and play safe. Yellow ball. Gerard Green one. A number of the very strong players in the game perhaps would have played the pot and screw back there using Q power and accurate striking. Sean Murphy, perhaps Ronnie O'Sullivan, Neil Robertson. I don't think Gerard Green's in that league of power players and every player plays his own different way as well, Clive. Yes, and maybe at this stage, didn't want to make a mistake through uh, trying to overplay his hand. Safety to the top cushion. to be okay. Black gone from one safe position to another. Looks like it's going to be a tenth last frame. Directed safety from Fu. Hmm. It was dead straight. Just a basic test of queuing, but uh, the fact that he missed it indicates, uh, I believe, the tension he must be feeling.
Irene Williams squatting down to check the exact position of the balls in case uh, he has to replace them. No fear of that with Green choosing that shot. And that's safe. Good safety that though from Fu. Our survey said. Well that far too thin the only saving grace I suppose to some degree is it's not the easiest of starts to get a break going okay you can go down the table for blue get the right side of the blue which he's One. done successfully but there's a lot of work to do to get even to 30 points in this break Maybe worth going into the reds here off the blue. So maybe the wrong shot as well. It's, it's a tough one. I'm not too sure from where he is though. He can actually do that. He can probably hit the ball hard enough the blue and stun down into the reds but he'd probably like to do it with a thinner angle than that getting the white ball to have even more speed on it as it's careered into the reds but even so it may mess up the table rather than improve it hard to see well, the soft drop onto the reds wasn't really what he wanted to do So, another let off for Gerard Green. Do you sense something, Clive? He's been let off the hook enough times, perhaps he'll grow to be a very big fish. Yes, maybe. I think if Fu loses, he could be replaying a few shots in his mind later tonight if he can get to sleep at all and tomorrow well he has got a pot but it's bit of a ridiculous one to take on so it's a safety I'm sure of that but the balls are becoming more and more awkward it would seem twelve point lead isn't really enough to get an advantage thirty point lead you may think advantage foo but Flicked his head across to make sure he wasn't touching the green again there. 
Yes, in a previous frame, he got down to play, drew his cue hand back and fouled the green with it. Should Gerard Green choose to, choose to play this red on the left-hand side thin, he's changed his mind, he would have pushed the black safe, so this looks to be okay to get around the back of the pink, down behind the green, should he connect right. Certainly didn't connect right, just about got away with it. It's very tense out there. Gerard hoping the safety shot went right, and as it went up the table, he realised he'd hit it a bit thick. And was up quickly off the shot, worrying what damage he'd done. The shot behind the green's still on, but the red on the left-hand side cushion now means there's a, an escape hatch. No, miss it again. Thin enough. Got our green four. And uh, the red is on to the other corner pocket from hand. Hmm. Okay, well, Gerard's long potting's gone a little off as the match has progressed. He needs a good one here, but actually, he's got an element of safety in the shot anyway. He's going to pot this and try and hold for the black. As long as he gets roughly close, he, he shouldn't leave anything up. Did he miss it? It's a mile out. But well, it's just tension. Both players desperate to get over the line here. It was a way out. Don't worry, I've been there. <laughs> yes, he's clearly very tight in the arm. Is Mar Marco looking at the red into the middle pocket, or is it just pure safety? There's your answer. One. Is he on a colour? He's not on a colour. But he should be able to play a good safety shot. Trouble is, with this mess of reds at the top of the table, the escape is very easy. Marco four, one. He lays the snooker, but an inch slower, and he would have been on the brown, an inch harder, and he would have been on the yellow from his initial red. Yes, I'm not sure it's even a snooker, but it wouldn't have been too much damage for Gerard to clear up anyway. Oh, is it that thick as well? Just about got away with it. One thing about these ultra fine cloths, even if you do occasionally catch a ball a bit thicker than you wanted, you do seem to still get back into the bulk area. They run very fast. Oh, Marco's playing billiards. He's trying to go in off again. Too thick again, but uh, at least hasn't left anything easy. Well, I said earlier in the last frame, I think it's when 
watching Gerard, it's sad. I didn't really mean, I wasn't feeling too sad for Gerard. He's in the semi-finals, but it's just not nice to see players going through the mill. But on the other hand, the sadistic side of, of me quite enjoys watching players collapsing. I think we all do. What a great shot. That wasn't a collapse. What? Fantastic shot. We all love to watch players under pressure, and, and if they fail, well, we, we sort of like are fascinated by that. But then it's always nice also to see somebody strike back. Can he get over the line, do you think? I think he, he may just be able to. That, that part could have done it for him. Six. Long, long way to go, though. But I agree, Steve. It's fascinating to see how well players can hold themselves together under extreme pressure. They can all do it when there's little or no pressure. So. Top red of the bunch goes. Difficult to see if the black spots. He couldn't get out of there. I think that was very hard to get out of. And I don't think he's on a ball now, is he? That's the black spot. Yes. He may be able to cut this red in. Not sure. 14. Yeah, it just goes. Well, hard to see where the next red's going to come from. Not too sure it's even worth potting the yellow. Could he use the brown to screw back up for the red? No real point, and that's a decent snooker. Yeah, green. It's taken four hours to reach this juncture of the match. Miss. And that's uh, an unnecessary four. four away, I would say. Yeah. Yes, I'm not absolutely sure that the lines are right there to be able to play that shot. He requires the cue ball to go very close to the blue in order to get this, because they slide a bit off the cushions, and uh, oh, it was okay, that one. Still going to slide a bit, just about okay. Yeah. I always remember Cliff Thorburn, but I think the year he retired, he was playing in the cubicles in the qualifying up at, uh, at the time, it was at the Norbrecht Castle in Blackpool. And he said, I've had enough of the game. He said, uh, you're, you're playing in your, your cubicle and there's one guy watching, probably the other, the other player's father, and you're just sort of a bit lonely talking to the referee. And it goes to four all, and the next minute all the players flock into your cubicle to see if you're going to crack up or not. And he said he didn't like it. <laughs> Very good safety shot from Marco there. And all of a sudden, the pressures are starting to turn towards him. All the cracks appearing there. For every bit of brilliance we saw this afternoon in what was a fantastic match of snooker, one of the best you'll probably see this season, this, in its own way, is just as exciting, if not more so. Yes, because it's uh, spiced up with unexpected mistakes.
Maybe a possible red here. Yes. I think this is a very realistic chance. He's going to shift a few reds around as well. Ooh, doesn't like it. It looks looks very gettable. It's obviously thinner than it looks on our television screen, but oh, he's turning that down. I oh. oh, I think I'd be tempted there on that one. I really would be. Oh, I was very surprised that I he was, turned that down. I was very tempted. Mind you, I'm out of the tournament, so it doesn't really matter, but could be behind the green here. Well, I think it was a time to try and seize an advantage rather than somehow hope you, your opponent is going to make mistakes and allow you to fall over the line. I think I'd have had to play for that red I just want to have another look at it <laughs> I want to be stand actually I want to stand behind it to see what it's like <coughs> sure if that was a black and you played that from there you'd be automatically playing that off its spot the thing is the question you'd have to ask yourself about should he play that shot or not Willie's next opportunity or his best opportunity from now on be as good as that. Oh, no miss. Meanwhile, cue ball six. shapes past the outside edge. Well, we saw uh, right at the start of this match, uh, Marco Fu miss a couple of times on this side, suggesting that possibly there's a fractional roll of the table. Dere, can you maybe call it up for the pink, please? To the left. Can you maybe call it up for the, the players the look. Press. It's important where the pink goes. It's got to be put back in the right place. It does come into the equation. It's obviously a ball that wasn't snookering Gerard Green, but and uh, he's not going to be able to see now, is he? Oh, anywhere then. That'd do. Yeah, go on. A bit further up the table, I think. I don't know. Okay, can you back again? You just added that. Is that it there? Okay. This is a great game. I like this game. Well, Green is also studying the freeze frame. Yeah, okay, thank you. I think what he's got is a slightly easier white ball. Yeah. No, no, it's been spotted as well. A bit over the brown. Perhaps the brown was more hampering yeah. the shot. Oh, a bit further up the table. Yeah, and he's further forward. I know it takes a bit of time to do this, but it's worth it. The, the board, it's important that they are back in exactly the same place. We made sure he hit it that time. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, let's see what Marco can do. His first red, not a problem. Positional side, a bit more difficult, possibly, to get correctly on the pink or the blue. One. Well, dead straight. <laughs> He's got the pink. Not as easy. He can roll through for the blue and leave himself the red nearest the pink spot, but I don't really think that's going to be that easy.
seven. He screws back from this red and gets black ball position. And why didn't Gerard take the red? Oh. Well, you were asking, Steve, would his next chance be any easier? But is there going to be a next chance? This was the shot that uh, Green turned down. opportunity for Marco Fu here. Not sure about the black spot. I don't think Marco would be Marco would be too worried about exactly 50. where the black goes at the moment. Because he's got a few Reds before he's going to make a decision. He may be able to clear them away here. Oh, that's even better. 60. Unless he loses position. It's looking good. He's just got to pot the balls. It's the easy bit. left corner 21 but he's got to strike this properly if he quits at all on the shot he could end up in no man's land so he's got to make sure he gets fairly high up the table here he chose to 22. play the pink in the middle pocket <clears throat> in some ways it's a bit riskier but it was perhaps the fact he didn't have to hit the ball as hard that made him choose that route he missed one earlier in the f match to the left jaw, rolling it slowly. I think he'd be hitting this with a bit more pace. Well, Gerald Green 28. knows that uh, the match is out of his hands, in that uh, Fu has a great chance to clinch victory at this visit. 29. And that was a lot better shot than it looked. Could easily have gone wrong there. Reds and two pinks here. We'll see Fu pass the post. Barring snookers. 36. Green has certainly had his chances and in, in this deciding frame two things cost him. One, a red that he turned down and two, butchering the safety. Hitting it much too thick. 42. And leaving Fu this winning chance. 43. Already one snooker needed, and uh, 
the pink will make sure. Well, it would have done. Full 43. But matches have been won from one snooker needed. Oh my goodness. Surely not. Surely not. He's got a great chance of a snooker behind the pink. Possibly behind the black. He didn't like it behind the black, but anyway. Well, perhaps he went behind the pink. What happens to a player when it's match ball? In the last frame, Fu had a, a simple positional shot to get on the sitting pink for middle, which would have left Green needing a snooker. Ended up losing the frame. And in this frame, he was over the line in terms of leaving his opponent needing one snooker, but he had a very easy pink indeed to put him right out of it. Well, I don't know, perhaps he was thinking of his press conference. Could use the black here as a, a stopper for the white ball. Well, I think Marco Field goes off the back cushion behind the yellow. That seems a pretty easy escape. No. Foul. Amazing. Jello green four. Well, it looked a straightforward one cushion escape, but I guess at such a stage, nothing is, a, is as straightforward as all that. The only saver for Marco Fu is that uh, it's a very difficult shot to get back up the table for the black that he needs. Brown safe is another little bit of insurance for Marco. But of course, Gerard doesn't have to play the pot here. He doesn't have to. He, I think he's going for it. Ooh, I don't know if I like this much. This can only go wrong. Well, not only go wrong, but it can go wrong. Oh, what a great shot that is. What a great shot. One. I didn't think from the commentary block position there was any way he could have avoided collision with the yellow. What a shot. Oh, that was tough to get on the yellow. He's giving himself a chance. <laughs> what a shot this would Eight. be. Should he cho choose and it's a, it's a brave shot. Pot the yellow, screw the brown out. blown it again this would be amazing this would be incredible the brown's gone safe not necessarily so safe for a left-hander what an amazing match a bit further away 13. from the brown and at not the right angle he's just got to concentrate on potting this brown and not really worrying too much about how far away from the cushion <laughs> he can get the white ball the white ball should he pot this brown is going to end up very close to the side cushion Gerard Green, 13. Well, not that easy, but certainly a good chance. 
but uh, at this stage the shot looks that, that much more difficult because of its significance. So here is Clue again with match ball. He makes it. Four. So, after all, Fu is going to get over the line. Nine. The last two frames were particularly dramatic. He should have won 6-4. And he looked as if he'd thrown away the deciding 11th frame as well. But eventually, he prevailed by six frames to five to go through to tomorrow's final. Wow, what a struggle in the end. Marco Fu tried his very, very damnedest to throw it away. However, he's in the final with Ronnie O'Sullivan. I tell you, the gasp. Of, uh, of horror going on in that last frame, Dennis. What did you make of it? Well, he played the best shot of the tournament for me, Gerard, with the rest. I mean, Steve couldn't believe that he got round the back of the green. He potted the red, got round the back of the green. He had to get on the black. If he hits the green, it's all over. And that, for me, was the shot of the, the tournament, John. And he, he was unlucky, that brown. He had to make sure of the brown. He was concentrating more on the white, wasn't he? I'm going back before that. <laughs> what has Marco Fu done? Missing the pink off the spot. Mm. Pop the pink and shake hands. I mean, if it, honestly, he wouldn't have got any further than the bridge down the road if he'd have lost that match. He'd have been right off it on the way home, honestly, because to lose a match from that position would have been absolutely scandalous for him. Well, the body language wasn't revealing it, but certainly that the potting or lack of it was. I mean, the tension, you could have cut it with a knife out there. Yeah. I just think when he got on the pink, as Steve said, he was thinking about his press conference because there's no way he could miss it. But it, it never ceases to amaze me, this game of snooker. If you don't give it 100% concentration, you can miss anything. How will Gerard Green reflect on tonight's events, John? It will be a sore one. Very sore. And it might be for a day, like Clive said, it might be for a, a couple of weeks, because he had a fantastic chance to get to his first ranking final there, and he got thrown a lifeline. And he just hit the green just a little bit too hard, it's understandable, and he didn't quite get on the brown perfectly. But as Dennis said, it, 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 sometimes you've just got to knock the ball in a hole and stand for where your position is and give yourself a chance. But you know, it's a, it's a totally different setup for him there. It's the first time in a ranking semi. He's five all, biggest match of his career. You can forgive him for missing anything, really. Well, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan who will be playing Marco Fu, and I'm just hearing a rustling from behind our set. I think Marco's on his way now. In fact, here he comes. Come on in, Marco. Congratulations. <laughs> wow, you must be feeling relieved, my boy. <laughs> Yeah. Tried hard to throw it away, it seemed, in that last mm, frame, Michael. Mm, yeah, very disappointed with that performance today. It was, uh, I mean, the ranking final, ranking event final, but this just feel very disappointing, you know, because the way I was playing was, I wasn't really nervous, but I was very tired towards the end, and uh, my body was moving a lot, when, especially in the power shots and delicate shots, you know, sometimes. And, uh, yeah, just the way that play was terrible, you know, I just can't say much more about that. Nevertheless, you can now conserve some energy. You've done it. You're back into a world ranking final for the first time for nine years, Marco, and it's ironically in this Grand Prix event. It's like your career's come full circle. Can you describe how important a moment this is for you, though? Yeah, it shows, shows you how quick I'm learning things, you know. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm nine years uh, later, I'm in a final again, so this is, <laughs> it's frustrating, you know, because sometimes I just really don't really want to think about it because like nine years is a long time and in between I, I got to semis but it doesn't really mean anything because I kept struggling in the semi-final. Today I struggle as well so it's not, it's still still far away I mean from becoming a, a good player you know it's just not acceptable the way I'm playing. Why do you so. think it has taken you such a long time to get back into one? Maybe, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I can't really put my finger on it you know because um, but I've some seasons, you know, some seasons I play really well, but once I get to the quarters, semis, I start to struggle a little bit. So um, maybe it's just men mentally just not strong enough, I think. Well, this could be the stages. start of a new chapter for you, of course. It's Ronnie O'Sullivan. And your record is pretty good against Ronnie. In fact, um, it's five matches all, and there's been one drawn match as well. What do you feel about the prospect of facing him tomorrow? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the match, but I mean, the record doesn't really mean anything. I mean, it's the uh, ranking event final, so uh, that's history now, you know, five each, you know. It's, it's uh, like mentally, I, I feel I can you know, beat him. That's, that's a good sign, but 
uh, it's a different ball game, I think, in the ranking event finals, so uh, it's going to be tough, uh, but uh, I think I'm going to enjoy the match. Well, you put your coach, um, Terry Griffiths, through the mill next door, I know, and I know <laughs> that your dad, Willie, has been trying, I'm sure, to follow events from back home. He's in Hong Kong at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how have you been keeping in touch with him, and what do you think his reaction will be? He'll be a very proud man tonight, I would think, Michael. Um, yeah, I think he look at the score sheet, he'll be proud of it. Uh, I, hope did, yeah, I hope you didn't really watch that. that <laughs> match, <you know. laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just mixed emotions. You know, I'm very happy, you know, to be in the final. But the way I was playing was just embarrassing. Really. But yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll win it tomorrow for, for my dad. You know, he's, he's, uh, uh, well, he's very pleased for you, but his hair's fell out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, we wish you all the best. Tomorrow is another day. Get some sleep, and we look forward to Thanks, seeing you guys. in that final. Well Thanks for popping in well to see us. Well done. Well, uh, we'll be back with that final at 2.30 tomorrow here on BBC Two. Well, it didn't quite go to plan for 15 Englishmen in Paris tonight, but uh, there is another Englishman in line for a victory tomorrow. Can Ronnie do it? Or is this title heading east? Far east? We'll soon see. It's going to be a real scrummage to find out. From us all here in Aberdeen, bye-bye for now. <laughs>